Sporting artist Adriano Minocchia captures the magic of fly fishing in his paintings. Chat with Palace Theater Executive Director Kevin Johnson and catch a performance from Jules Olsen. It's all ahead on this episode of AHA! A House for Arts. Funding for AHA! has been provided by your contribution and by contributions to the WMHT Venture Fund. Contributors include the Leo Cox Beach Philanthropic Foundation, Chet and Karen Alpelka, Robert and Doris Fisher Melsardi, and the Robeson Family Foundation. At m and Bank, we understand that the vitality of our communities is crucial to our continued success. That's why we take an active role in our community. m and Bank is pleased to support WMHT programming that highlights the arts, and we invite you to do the same. Warwick, and this is AHA, a house for arts, a place for all things creative. Here's Matt with today's Phil segment. I'm here in Cambridge, New York to get a peek inside the studio of sporting artist Adriano Minocchio. Let's go. I never in my wildest dreams thought I would end up being a, a painter. My dad was a journalist, a uh, foreign correspondent, and I think I was in sophomore year of high school. He was going to Yankee Stadium to cover a soccer match between uh, the great Pelé and an Italian team, and he asked me if I wanted to go. Now, being from the city and a Yankee fan, I said, sure. And the day before we left, he handed me his 120 Rolex camera, which I had never used before, showed me how to use it, showed me f-stops and focus. and. We went to the game, I took some photographs, and they were published in one of the daily newspapers that he worked for, and I got the bug. I mean, it was, it was instant. I became a photojournalist, I did that for about 15 years. Every day was another experience. Everything from spending time with Muhammad Ali at his training camp to uh, photographing Tennessee Williams to go into the White House to, it was really an exciting time. But I was getting burned out from the travel. We had a young son at the time and I was never home. The business was changing. We were going from film to video. I was a little intimidated about that move. And I happened to be in Phoenix, Arizona with my wife, Teresa, one year covering an IndyCar race. We had a day off, went to the Heard Museum and it was a show of the Cowboy Artists of America, which was fascinating. It just blew me away. I'd never seen anything like it. And I started to think, gee, I'd like to be a painter. Um, I had some background, obviously being a photographer, you know composition and light and color and that sort of thing, but um, I really knew nothing about painting. So I spent about a year at the Nourishell Library just reading techniques of the old masters. And one day I sprung the news to my wife, hey, I'm closing the uh, news agency and I'm gonna become a painter. And I just, just started painting. I mean, it really wasn't, I didn't stop and think that, gee, maybe you really shouldn't be doing this. You really don't know what you're doing. It was self-taught and just wanted to find out what this world was like and I discovered it. Little by little I started to focus more and more on wildlife, uh, on the outdoors. I was just learning how to fly fish at the time and a friend of mine took me up to Brewster. We were fishing the Croton Watershed, which is a beautiful uh, area. And he asked me to do a pencil sketch of him landing a fish. And I did, and I said, yeah, you know, that was, that was fun, that was interesting. And I just started doing more and more scenes of water. I'll make a preliminary sketch, thumbnail sketches to see if the composition works, and then I sketch a rough sketch on a gessoed, smooth board. Because there's very little texture, I build up a layer. So what I do is I rough in, I, I block in the scene using just burnt sienna, white, and a little blue. 
I'm able to see what the composition looks like. Also, it gives that base coat, it gives that texture and, and, and surface that I can work on. When that dries, then I start to put in color. And again, I'll do it loosely. I won't get into detail. And I'll let it dry and I'll, and I'll slowly continue to build. When I'm painting water, um, there may be six, seven, eight, nine coats, different layers that I'm building in dark and lights, different colors, till I begin to feel that there's some depth to that scene. There is one painting that I did a number of years ago. We were in Yellowstone, which is one of my favorite places to paint. Um, we used to go quite often. Um, and there's a stretch of the Firehole River. And it is, to me, it's, it's magical. There's something about it. Um, you know, the thing was, I had to get there before the sun came up every morning and we'd, Therese and I would walk along the banks and the sun would come up and it'd be elk grazing and buffalo and geese taking off. And the river had a magic to it, it had a color. It had a movement to it, very winding. Um, and I did a painting and it's called My Favorite Stretch. And it's funny because one year we were doing a, a, a show, a sportsman show, and I had a print of it. And the guy came up to me and he says, that's my favorite stretch. So I says to him, do you know where that is? He says, I know exactly where that is. He says, that's, the, that's a fire hole in Yellowstone by the parking area. He says, that is my favorite spot in the world. I says, mine too. So this is, that was one painting that I always go back to thinking about, you know, what to me is a perfect scene. The person in most of my paintings is Ted Patlin, my dear, long-lost brother. <laughs> I met Teddy uh, some 40-something years ago at a sportsman show down in Suffern, New York. He came over, looked at my work, offered to do some framing. Ted's a teacher, a retired teacher. And uh, he said, hey, if you ever want to go fishing, why don't you give me a call? And I, I was fly fishing at the time, but I wasn't really great at it or good at it. And I started to go fishing with Ted, and he just, the two of us just clicked. I mean, I'd find a spot and say, hey, Ted, you mind standing over there in the sun? And it, you know, it would just make the painting. It would just make the whole scene. And he and I, we, we were joking a while back uh, about how many rivers and streams we've fished together over the last 40 years, and we came up with 99. So I told him, he and I, we have to find one more stream to make it an even 100. You know, I enjoyed my previous career but there were a lot of limitations. You know, you were given an assignment, you know, make sure you come back with this, 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 and this, uh, which was exciting. But there were, there were the deadlines, there was that um, a constant worry about producing something for someone else. Art has given me the opportunity to really express myself the way I want to. And I think that's been the greatest, greatest thing for me. Albany's Palace Theater first opened its doors way back in 1931. Today, the historic venue is home to the Albany Symphony Orchestra and continues to present films, major concerts, and events for the community. Let's learn more from the Palace's executive director, Kevin Johnson. Welcome to All Today, Kevin. I'm excited to talk to you about the Palace Theater. Hi, I'm glad to be here. Yeah, well, to start, I would like to get to know a little bit more about your role within the Palace Theater. Can you give us a little bit? I'm the executive director at the Palace. Uh, I've been there uh, as the executive director since August of 2021. Um, if I had to describe it, I would say that I am the leader of the organization, um, and I work with my leadership team to manage um, our employees and develop our staff uh, to make sure that we put on the best events possible. Within your position, there is a heavy focus on promoting and fundraising. Mm -hmm. So I want to talk a little bit about that in detail. So what about promoting and fundraising, one, brings you joy, and why is it important to the organization? Uh, fundraising, of course, it, um, it everything goes to the bottom line. Uh, you have to have a, uh, you have to be able to fundraise in order to keep the doors open. Fortunately for us, um, our house is more of an operations type uh, house where um, our budget is primarily built on uh, the activities that happen within the theater. Um, so it, it makes it a little easier to have a good team, um, a marketing director that's been there now for probably close to 20 years uh, makes my job a lot easier when it comes to that. And when it comes to the promoting piece, like why do you think that that's so important? 
Well, um, because we're more of a rental house, uh, a lot of the big name artists, uh, they're brought in by national, regional, um, and local promoters. Uh, so we focus a lot of our efforts on some of the community-based stuff, uh, and it gives us the flexibility to create things that we feel the community would wanna see. Uh, we partner with a lot of other organizations to have them come in and uh, create and uh, give us something else to, uh, to put out there. Um, it's not so much about buying the talent, it's about partnering and collaborating with other creatives, as you guys call them, uh, to come in and uh, utilize the space. And why is that important to you, do you think? Uh, it's important to me because I got my start by, um, you know, just doing things. Um, and when you walk into a building like the palace, you, you're pretty much inspired to do something. Um, and I think when we open the theater up to different individuals and different organizations that may not have ever been in there before, uh, I think their creative juices get going and it allows us to uh, create something that may not already exist. That's beautiful. Yeah. And being able to provide these opportunity to folks, does it make you feel all tingly inside? What about like <laughs> fundraising and promoting brings you joy? I know you have a background in it. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's all community. Um, it's providing access and opportunity to uh, as many people and as many organizations as we possibly can. Like I said, I wouldn't be doing the things that I'm doing now if it were not for individuals that opened the door for me in one way or another. So it's really important to keep places like the Palace Theater sustainable mm -hmm. and alive and beneficial to the community. I mean, it's, it's hugely important. Um, and I think we are a pillar in the community in the sense where I think the Palace is an economic driver for not only downtown Albany, but for the region. Um, whenever we have um, events that come in, you know, people come in from all over, they stay in hotels, they eat in the restaurants, and it provides a good uh, tax base for um, the, um, the small businesses in the area. and uh, you you know, it, it livens up downtown. And that's really important too, because you know, especially with the small businesses, yeah. restaurants, you know, hotels, that really is money coming, yeah. flowing into the city. Yeah. Have you seen a positive impact at your time at the Palace about how that has affected the city with it economically or community-wise? Well, we always hear from our partners. Um, the fundraising piece for us at times gets easy because uh, the individuals that we're going to um, and ask them to support us, they see the direct benefits of being a, uh, a neighbor to the palace. Mm -hmm. And they see the benefits of being a friend to the palace because those are the organizations and the businesses and the individuals in the community that get a direct benefit from the activities that they see uh, at the theater. With community in mind, what kind of special programs does the palace do to kind of that benefit the local creative community? Uh, well, we have our community engagement initiative, um, and there are a number of elements to that. One of which is our uh, workforce development component, where we actually uh, train and certify security guards that work not only at the palace, but we've known that they've gotten jobs at Capitol Rep, um, the MVP uh, Arena, uh, the Capitol Center. Uh, we partner with, um, of course, the Omni Symphony is in, um, they're uh, a resident at the palace. Uh, we partner with as many local arts organizations, community organizations as we can. And we always look to um, engage anyone that wants to participate in the arts. Uh, we welcome them to come to the palace and we'll sit down and see what we can work out. And how would people approach? Like, let's say if a local theater collective wants to come and approach the palace, how would that, how would that contact happen? Just call Kevin. Yeah, really, there we go, it's, easy it's really peasy. <laughs> oh God, yeah. hear that folks? Make sure you call Kevin <laughs> if you wanna be involved in that. Mm -hmm. So what are some events that are coming up that folks should know about? Uh, in the coming months, we have a little bit of everything. We have literally something for everybody. We have uh, Dark Star Orchestra, we have uh, Blippy, we have uh, an April Fool's comedy event that looks like it's gonna Ooh, come in. That could be fun um, or scary. John Mellencamp. <laughs> uh, I mean, you name it, we got it. Awesome. Yeah. I mean, if you really want to know, if you go to palacealbany.org, it lists all of our upcoming events. Awesome, well, thank you. And one more thing, this is just random. What has been your favorite moment at the Palace Theater, whether it's with an entertainer or any type of experience? It would probably be at this point, and it can change tomorrow. Um, when uh, I reached out to uh, a promoter that was on tour with Kevin Hart, and I had did dates with Kevin Hart as a promoter a long, long time ago. Um, and when 
we booked the show. The show sold out in somewhere around you know, two, three days, um, and he sold out two performances. Wow. Um, mm -hmm. As we were getting closer to the date, we got a call and said, hey, it looks like we're going to have a surprise for the Albany community. Uh, and they said that Chris Rock was going to be making a special appearance. Uh, he was going to open up for Kevin Hart. And uh, fortunately for me, and I think it was 2017, I actually co-promoted a Chris Rock concert at the Palace as a promoter. Uh, so to have him come back, and I'm now the executive director, that was probably one of the um, most special moments yeah, up until this point. The glow up, yeah. yes, that's amazing. <laughs> and is uh, Chris Rock a pretty cool guy? Yeah, they, ah. they both are actually. Oh God, I, right? I always yeah. see Kevin Hart everywhere, yeah, so yeah. I'm like. I well, was... Kevin wasn't always that way. Well, when I met him, but he, he's a great guy. So you saw his growth, and he saw your growth. That's... I, I don't even know if he even remembers me. But... <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Kevin. Yeah. I appreciate you coming by and talking about the Palace Theater. And I hope a lot of folks visit it this summer. It's a great place. It's a great resource for creating. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> Anytime. Please welcome Jules Olson. And I roll down the windows while I'm driving up. Heat pumping a familiar scent Brings me to you Now you're flowing through me Spiraling out into nothing here in the sun a few footsteps, vacancy loud When the cold hits and the truth is I'm scared you're forgetting me Oh, I'm finding it hard to sleep Well, now my dreams scream so loud And oh, your name is burned into the footsteps vacancy loud when the cold hits and the truth is oh, when the cold hits and the leaves are gone when the cold hits and I'm all alone when the cold hits and that's our song when the cold hits oh, oh I'm spiraling Steps vacancy loud when the cold hits, and the truth is, oh, the truth is, oh, the truth is, I'm scared you're forgetting me. It's piling on again I'm feeling heavy again You're talking but I just don't have it in me to listen I'm laid up in bed again Just staring at the ceiling I'm spinning my thumbs and circling my mind Just trying to remember The person I was before I 
feel different somehow Up past the ceiling, I don't know how But I feel different somehow Up past the ceiling Oh, oh, no, hold me, hold me close Oh, everything is changing Shifting, shifting Below me, my world is rearranging And I don't know how But I found shy Thank you for joining us. For more arts, visit wht.org slash aha. And be sure to connect with us on social. I'm Jade Warwick, and thanks for watching. Funding for AHA has been provided by your contribution and by contributions to the WMHT Venture Fund. Contributors include the Leo Cox Beach Philanthropic Foundation, Chet and Karen Alpelka, Robert and Doris Fisher Melsardi, and the Robeson Family Foundation. At m and Bank, we understand that the vitality of our communities is crucial to our continued success. That's why we take an active role in our community. MIT Bank is pleased to support WMHT programming that highlights the arts and we invite you to do the same.